Hello and you're very welcome to another the JMAC podcast. I'm John Mann. Of course, this podcast is brought to you by orgrich.com and attack.de. Use promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgrich.com and get the best skins, gloves, equipment on attack.de. Be attack minded. And if you're liking what you're seeing, like it, subscribe on YouTube because the sport's been absolutely brilliant so far. And today I'm joined by Aidan McCarran, a former Tyrone footballer and current Dramard senior football manager. So, um, a good, good journey, man. Uh, so really looking forward to uh, chatting to uh, Wiley tonight. Um, hope you don't mind me calling you a journeyman. How's things? No, not too bad, John. Come here. I have a question for you before we start. Oh, see, God. See the intro there. How long did it take you to get that nailed? Um, uh, it, it kind of rolls off the tongue. I kind of like, I, 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 I like it to send it to people. So I don't even need to read it anymore. I just read it in case I don't feck up. <laughs> probably seeing it in your sleep i am i am i'm doing these podcasts in my sleep as well it's just a bit of energy to do them <laughs> yeah. come on come on how's things i sure all's good hey all's very good day uh, i'm sitting out in the backdrop here of some michael's uh school pitches are behind me and the sun's just going down so it's been a lovely evening up here so yeah all's good yeah, happy days, my man. Happy days, and um, yeah, well, life is good then. So and so, we're, we're kind of going to touch on obviously to your coach experience, um, your days with Tyrone, and everything goes with that. So we'll start. First of all, we can kind of start on the championship. It's uh, started in April, so it's going to take a lot of getting used to. Tyrone obviously got over the line against Fermanagh uh, last Saturday evening by seven points, and obviously you're a happy, a happy Tyrone man this week. Convincing performance, I suppose. At the end of the day, it was all about just getting the job done. Ah, it was like I kind of said, <clears throat> like, you know, Tyrone were kind of in a, a, in a no-win situation because if they had a speak for Mana convincingly, everyone was going to turn around and say, you know, the Division 1 team against the Division 3 team, that's expected. If they kind of had a stuttered and struggled um, through the game and, and just got over the line, people would probably read a wee bit that and the players leaving the panel, you know. So um, I think Tyrone, the, the third quarter, they were they were. Active. We probably from what I thought were were superb for half the the running game caused Tyrone a bit of problems and you know the they moved the ball fast and moved it through the hands but you know the goal before half time really turned the tide and I think Tyrone had I think it was nine scores in a row in that third quarter you know and uh, they'd done enough what they had to do they'd probably be a wee bit disappointed at, as to how the the conceded two ten you know probably the the two goals at the end as well. Um, they went to sleep on them defensively, especially the quick free kick from Quigley, you know. Um, but, ah, listen, still a lot to work on, but you hit the nail in the head, hey. It's it's strange Ulster Championship starting in April. Strange, strange time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, 100% big man. Like, and I suppose kind of adapting to that as well, like, because obviously there's talk about it on the league Sunday and, they're absolutely groundbreaking analysis. Not um, <laughs> great them going on about it, but it it is going to take a bit of getting used to. It. Like the weather's not too bad, but I'm so like I know us people. We love things being straightforward. I know in the GA, it's a very rigid kind of system and situation. So it's so yeah, creatures have it 100. So like the weather's not too bad, but you kind of prefer the sun splitting the stones. But look at uh, this is what they're going with, and the All Ireland final is going to be July Wiley. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I suppose. The one thing I would say in it, like it, it, it is probably better from a club point of view if you're if you're involved, you know, solely as a club player and that. But um, the the dual season, like if you're if you're playing inter county and club, it's it's a long season for you too, and you could maybe throw in college football on top of that. Like so, it's it's going to take a few years to to get the feedback and to see how it's going. But um, I listen, just happy to throw and got the win. That's that's the big thing, you know. You'll you'll take wins like that any any time of the year, April or August. So onwards and upwards now. I suppose obviously the first half performance, like it was a very, very kind of tight game for Man. It did give Tyrone lots of it in the first half, and maybe the kind of the wheels fell off the bus to a degree in the second half. And Conor McKenna came on, and obviously we, we'll touch on Conor McKenna's sending off now in a couple of, a couple of minutes. But um, obviously the second half performance, Tyrone kind of let off the shackles a bit and you know played the football that we kind of expected them to play, uh, maybe not in the first half. But it was obviously a good win. Fergal Logan, Brian Dewar, dust off the cobwebs. Up and down sort of league campaign, you know, probably not really talk with the McKenna Cup campaign, yeah. but look, they'll just be happy to uh, get the win, I suppose, and get out of uh, the fortress that is Ennis Gillen. Yeah, listen, I suppose, you know, the big thing for Tyrone was one, getting the win, two, they've, they've got out of it with, with no injuries, maybe a couple of knocks and that. There's a Conor McKenna suspension, but when you see the video evidence, you kind of wonder what he was sent off for. You know, I think Fergal Logan made a. Retaliation. Yeah, well, I think Fergal Logan made a good point on that. You know, 
um, maybe I'm sticking up for Spoon here, and you're sticking up for your Calvin man. That was that was. That no, I'm not sticking up for the because like in fairness and like in Paddy Andrews and I don't know did you see the Paddy and James podcast and news talk at the minute but they like uh, Paddy did make a good point like it was retaliation because he obviously seen that Con Patrick did get eye gouged yeah um, and then yeah every action has a reaction so I think McKenna obviously the jersey came off of him how yeah. that even managed like you, know, you need to protect your players yeah I suppose that Fergal Logan made a good point and I think it's a very very valid point you know the whole the whole buzzword at the minute is contributing to MLE but what's the fine line of contributing to MLE and protecting a player do you know what I mean like the, the thing is if if Conor McKenna is sent off for retaliation there's, there's a couple of Fermanagh lads around that have reacted to that as well and in my opinion no one deserved to be sent off after the initial thing that started them um so i i would i would i would totally expect connor to get off of that like and fair logan probably will but i suppose yeah <laughs> he'll get him off but i suppose the one thing you would probably have to say like and like I, I can just always remember i think it was in the all Ireland final in 15 philip mcmahon done something similar to kieran donahue's yeah. eye Gooch, then, Gooch, maybe he done it to the Gooch, I think, yeah, I oh know, I don't. He spotted it. So, like, yeah. I suppose, I suppose, on that as well, that obviously was missed. And then, obviously, everyone was going to see Conor McKenna's tackle. He basically, I don't think he's yeah. nearly yeah. you see at UFC. But again, he was just sticking up for the incident yeah. that happened beforehand. So, I suppose, look, at he probably will get off. Hopefully, he will get off because Derry's going to be a very tight game. But just stupid things like that, did and coming away from Ulster Championship game, you just don't want to be talking about it once again, you know. No, definitely not, because it, pr- it probably took the shine off Tyrone's second half performance. You yeah, know? and Conor McKenna's... And it, yeah, I was just going to say that. Like uh, To me, that's probably been Conor McKenna's best performance in a Tyrone. Mm. He's returned home. Like, mm. Definitely, you know. And Well, this this so far this season anyway, yeah. Yeah, even, you know, he, the impact, like, you know, he's he's a, he, in his first year, you know, under Mickey, he had, he had good games and there was always the flashes of brilliance, but it was... It was such a dominating performance from him in that second half. Like he was just untouchable. He just looked he looked like the you know, the player that would that Australian rules teams would be mad looking. Mm, mm, yeah, no. Yeah, but yeah, it, yeah. Him him hitting the form now bodes well for Tyrone. Mm. So yeah, listen, it's gonna be interesting. The Derry game's coming up and Derry had a had a great league campaign. They'd probably be disappointed that they didn't get over the line in the promotion, you know. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be a battle. Hey, it's back to the back to years ago when I was growing up. It was a big throne Derry rivalry, and Derry kind of fell away for a bit. But um, yeah, they seem to be on the way back under Rory now. Mm-hmm. No, it'll be a very interesting couple of weeks. And I suppose kind of touching on Tyrone's situation, it's been like seven lads that did leave the panel. Uh, your Rodan O'Neill, Hugh Pat McCary, uh, Tierney McCann, to name a few, I suppose, kind of squad players to a degree. Yeah. Like, can you see Tyrone be, being impacted by any of them losses when the championship does go on? Or do you feel the 26, 30 lads that are there representing Tyrone at the minute can have a successful year with them? Uh, yes and no. Um, I think definitely that the lads that's there at the minute, it can be another successful year. Arthur Rome going to miss um, Paul Donaghy, Ronan O'Neill, Tiernan McKeon, Lee Brennan, Mark Bradley. I think I think they will to a certain extent because to me, them boys are still in the best 30 players that there is in Tyrone. You know, they're, they're still well worth their weight in the panel. Um, I think a wee bit too much has been made of the lads leaving the panel. You know, there was mm. a few retirements that lads have just thought... It's just the been- amount of them. I think that's it. And to me, probably, you know, after the initial one of, of Rome O'Neill going and uh, Tiernan McKeon, I think Paul Donaghy is probably the latest, you know, the last lad that left. Like he, yeah. He played 15 minutes in the All-Ireland final. Had a great league campaign last year. You know, he kicked, I remember a game in, o- in Oma, he kicked 10 points against Donegal in, in the league outing. You know, nice. yeah. he's probably he's probably, he's probably been the best club footballer in Tyrone for a number of years now. Apparently, he's untouchable in Tyrone club football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, I suppose the thing is, and and just when we talk, when we mentioned about the split season, John, all them lads that have either retired or or left the Tyrone panel, they're all involved with clubs that would be a yeah. in senior championships or or big yeah. on their own. You know, yeah. and probably yeah. think that you know if I'm not getting what I want here, I, I'm gonna I could potentially get it with the club, like so. Mm-hmm. You know. Say that's weighed in on their decisions, but it's disappointing as a Tyrone supporter because you want the best players playing. But yeah. you know, 
Fergal and Brian are, are making the decisions, you, you can't really argue with them at the minute. Yeah, and I suppose it, it, in the last couple of years, you kind of have seen the likes of maybe like I know Kyle Coney fairly well, Connor McAlisky, yeah. some of them boys, yeah. Wiley, you know, yeah. like, like Jesus, like Christ, them boys walk into onto any county team oh, in Ireland. So really? like, it's, I don't know within Tyrone, and she's probably a, a good man to ask, no better man to ask. Is there like a is it an attitude problem at times? Is it lads maybe throwing the toys at the pram, getting frustrated because really it can't be? I know the thing, you know, uh, I know Darren McCurry was very vocal in his views on the G. At the podcast about Mickey Hart, but it can't be a management problem again because realistically, Brian Dewar and Fergie Logan surely look like they're buying. Yeah, no, I, to be honest, I don't think it's it's arrogance or lads throwing rattles out of the out of the prom or that. Like, I can experience it a wee bit when talking about the throwing panel. You know, you'd have maybe you'd have maybe been in for a game and then you'd have you'd have played well, but. You always kind of felt that maybe the first time you didn't perform, you were hooked off, and that was you to the back of the list, you know. So um, the lads probably are weighing up everything, you know. They're probably weighing up the the pressure they might be getting from their club at home to to commit there and have a have a big year, like because the Tyrone Senior Championship is so competitive. Like club football in Tyrone is, you know, it's there's seven, eight, nine, ten teams all in a par, mm. and you know it's the rivalry so much like a. You laugh like you, you get into a house in Tyrone and if it's a football house, there'll be a picture of the Lord in the hallway and above it will be the local GA team. Jesus, it's, right, yeah. Just, it's just, they're just fanatical everywhere. Like So I would say it's a case of lads maybe not getting the minutes that the field justifies them staying in a panel and that's probably they've made the decision maybe for themselves, maybe maybe for the panel, that they're maybe when they're there and they're not getting game time, maybe they're not nice to be around. And, you know, you have to weigh everything up, like, because yeah. it's such a big commitment now, mm-hmm. you know. You know, I look at even, I think, Tierney McCann's getting married this year. He yeah. He was a pharmacist about Dublin. I know that when he had kind of started to lose his place in the Tyrone team, he moved closer to home to try and cut down the travelling and that. And, Jesus, yeah. yeah. You know, so there's these, for ten years he's been doing that and probably put his life on hold. So maybe now he's he's won us all Ireland. He's he's had a great career as a throne footballer. Maybe now he's wants to focus on giving a a bit back to his club and and maybe you know creating a life outside of football for himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. To me, to me that's the big thing. Like uh, whether it's coaching or playing, like I think you have to appreciate the outside life and and appreciate your friends and family. You know because you have to, yeah. Because when all the athletic logos are gone and all the you know the jerseys and the tracksuits are tucked away in the wardrobe, you know that's what you have then is your friends, your family, and your yeah. your football. So people have to really appreciate that, like. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, life starts to kind of take over, I suppose. It does. Uh, does. Wildly big bloody time. And I suppose it kind of uh, touching on to that, like in, it, the Ultra Championship pr- uh, probably as a whole, it's the most competitive championship we're going to see for years, Aiden. Like I know last couple of years hasn't been very good. It's by far the most competitive one. But this year, more than any, it's really hard one to call. You're looking at Armagh, you're looking at Monaghan, you're looking yeah. at Donegal, you're looking at Throne, Derry to a degree. So... It, it's it's right as I said numerous times a couple of lads before it's like trying to correct the Da Vinci code who's going to win it yeah and and you know what the best of it is John like we, we could have there could be five of us talking here the, now the night like and you could make a strong case for five different teams and you know I could make a case for Tyrone you could make a case for Armagh somebody for Donegal Derry Monaghan you know even Calvin again and you'd be coming away thinking you know just he's right you know there's a wee chance to hear yeah. there yeah, it's just such a minefield, like, you know, it, it really is, like... Um, I'm taking Tyrone, I think. Yeah. I I, I, I'm hoping Tyrone. Um, oh, well, of course, yeah. <laughs> but, but you know yourself, like, it's 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 hard to do it, it's hard to do it back-to-back, like, um, and especially the way things are, it'll be interesting to see this year, but um, the Derry game will be interesting. Like, Derry, Derry done a lot, a lot of work in the off-season, and started the league on fire, you know, when we're racking up big scores and, and looking the deal and then you probably left a promotion did disappointed not to get a promotion, you know, and Armagh was the same. Armagh started the league on fire, had a lot of work done physically. Yeah. And just interesting to see now when teams have caught up with them too physically, um, how they react to that. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see now. 
Kieran McFall obviously uh, leaving the Derry panel yeah. very very odd time and he had a great league campaign he's been a very consistently good performer for Derry um, I think Rory Gallagher was kind of questioning his commitment to the cause but like the way I think apparently you probably know more than me the way Rory has teams training yeah. I think your commitment to the cause either needs to be 150% or 100% so I don't know what he needs No in fairness to Rory he, he, you know, he doesn't suffer fools he has a he has a pathway that he wants his players to buy and by all accounts, maybe Kieran Kieran wasn't buying into that, and uh, they've, they've parted ways. But I, I see he's left the door open for you know for the future if he wants to come back in. But I would say probably you know the run with Glenn, like he was outstanding for Glenn. You know, Jesus, he was he was outstanding for them. So maybe he suffered a wee bit of hangover from that run, and maybe just hadn't the stomach or the heart for the commitment that Rory was looking at the minute. Just before championship, though, like it, 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 but that not have been so out during the league, no. Hard to know, yeah. You know, I, you don't you don't be privy to these things. You don't know. I've seen recently that he's apparently heading for Boston. Oh, okay. So um, maybe maybe he went to Finn one night and he was committed to the cause and he was coming home and his phone went with a plus a double o one six one o number and that changed. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant stuff And obviously this weekend You have Armagh And Donegal It's just going to be A mouthwater game And I still give Tip my hat to Donegal But there's a lot to play For all the Armagh lads Have been overruled There's a lot of talk the, uh, In the last couple of hours About Or the last couple of days About like The ins and outs Of like the uh, process Of getting out of these games And it kind of makes A bit of a farce of it, I suppose Aiden But look It's good to have all The main lads playing And uh, I'd say there's a few Brown envelopes uh, Being swapped up in Armagh I well listen, as a neutral, you know, when you're when you're going to that game, if you're watching that game at the weekend or going to it, like you wanna see the Rain O'Neill's playing and Stephen Campbell, I think he's a fabulous footballer. Like I think he's he's just a class, class act. Like you wanna see the best players playing. Super. But I probably looking at it now, Donegal are probably wondering why they didn't appeal their sending offs. Yeah. As well, you know, with the fact that, that Armagh have got I think three out of the four turned over, wasn't it? All. All of them, all of them, all of them, all in, big man. So you know what I mean. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, a tasty, tasty affair now. You're heading, you gonna go? I think I will go up. Surely, I. I haven't told the missus here yet. <laughs> no, actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm actually in Liverpool this weekend. Oh, happy days. Actually, I'm actually over to see the Reds. So. Oh God. But, uh, not talk about last night. Don't say no, a word about it. <laughs> no, mail just at all. But I uh, know that that'll be a tasty affair. But probably yeah. like. Thank you. I think Donegal will. I think Donegal will have enough. Valley Buffet, that kind of experience as well. Like, and I think you know, I think yeah, our might be it might be a year early, but we wait and see. And then Cav and Antrim as well. So I think there will hopefully be no hiccups in that. What would be the thoughts out of that one? I that'll, that'll not be easy. Either. Like that's that's going to be a humdinger up in up in Cargan Park. Like it's geez, it's talk about uh, Galatasaray. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's not an easy place to go to. We used to, when I had my time at St Mary's at the, at the college there in the Falls Road, you know, we used to use it regularly there. Um, no, it's it's not a place for the faint-hearted now. Mm. So, uh, but I uh, listen, that'll be a good game too. But I uh, listen, sure, isn't it great? It's great to have the championship going. Like you can't have you can't have enough of games like this. Oh yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent. So no, great to have it back. It's April, but look at the that's as I said, it started. It's the Cards have been dealt with, Aidan, so yeah. we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. And I suppose we could touch on to yourself. Um, obviously, we'll start off with your kind of coaching experience. We were talking about the amount of clubs and bits and pieces you've been involved with. There's lots of it. I uh, don't know how you found the time for it over the years. Oh, right. played you, um, but we'll we, we'll crack we'll crack in uh, crack into it. Uh, so we started off with Jermard. Uh, you were involved with Swaddle Bar and Fermanagh Miners, uh, Mullahorn and, and Leitrim just before that. Uh, Jermard again, Gauna, Kilcar, and currently with Jermard. So um, the there, there must be a good crack up in your marriage. You're, <laughs> you're like, it must be like an ex. You want, you keep getting back with them. But uh, uh, <laughs> Frank, down around there, hey, you keep, uh, you keep coming back, and it, it's funny, hey, because there's the first time I was there is probably now twelve years ago. There's a couple of the, couple of the players now have sons playing, you know. So <laughs> it's how it, how it moves on, you know. Bloody hell! Uh, so yeah, I suppose we could probably touch on Jermard as a whole. And um, when you started off them, and then when you went back, and then you're obviously currently with them again. So when you started off them in 2010, like your like your first coaching job, and obviously it's going to be a very nerve wracking experience. How did you find it all? 
I I really enjoyed it. You know, probably at that time, uh, I was coming to a stage in me in my own playing career where um, my body was breaking down, and I had I had realized probably about maybe a year or two before that that the boots were going to have to be hung up very shortly. But you know, I just love football. Like I honestly, you know, I just I just love love Gaelic football. Um, watching it, thinking about it, you know, if I'm sitting in the house here, you're you're researching things, you're even, you know, YouTube and old games or you're 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 watching the games on the telly, you know, and I love that that changing room environment and you know, even that that bit of banter before training, you know, yeah. whenever it's like I, I love that stuff. Like um so I, I kinda had had a I'd come to a crossroads and I had to decide if I was gonna stay involved in the game or what and I I could never have seen myself not involved in the game, so I wasn't going to be playing. So I had to, I had to look for an avenue um, to stay involved. So I had done a little bit of coaching with um, some of a, a club team close to me in, in, in Fintna called Tarry Ray. Um, my father had took them a few times, and you know, I'd done the odd session for him in that. And you were just really at that stage regurgitating sessions that you would have done with a county you know you would have been involved in or, or taken part in a county team or a college team yourself you know and you you started getting bit by the bug for it then and um it was actually through the, the late Hugh McCabe here in Fermanagh um he put Dramard and Sean Hagen in touch with me and um that was it I went down there and probably since that of Sean now I'm, he's back in charge and Dramard this year and I'm, I'm down again doing the the football and and the gym coaching and obviously along the, along the way you know you you're, you're very green at the start when you go into it like and you know when you when you look back to the things you were doing then compared to what you're doing now it's how the game has moved on even at club level like um like I just before I come on here I was downloading our GPS stuff here from last night's last night's training session you know so that's all that's all part and parcel of it now like and. I suppose uh, I'd be very friendly with Peter Donnelly there. Um, oh, okay. And to me, like he's he's the best in the business. Oh, by a mile, yeah. You know, in, in GA terms and that. And uh, I, I remember reading a comment somewhere, or I can't mean where I've seen it, but it said, if you want to be good at something, find the ten best people in the world at it and copy them. So mm. you know, me and Pete would have would have been very friendly. If you want to get into podcasts, just watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly it. So uh, me and Pete would have been very friendly in our in our playing days when we were younger, and then life changes, and we went to college, and that and kind of drifted apart. And then a number of years later, when he's working with Calvin, we both find ourselves living in Enniskillen. Twenty thirteen. Yeah. So he was living in Enniskillen, and I was living in Enniskillen too. So um, you know, we'd have been in, in touch quite regular, and. He was starting to go down. He'd always he was doing the football coach with McCabe, and then he'd start to go down the S and C route too. And I remember we were talking one day, and he, he he made a great point to me, and he was like, "Wiley, you know, this is something that you should look into now as well." And he was on the fringe of the Tyrone panel when you were too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Was, then yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd have we'd have come through minor under twenty one, and he'd have been in the senior panel before me, and then I'd have broke in, you know, but. I remember we were we were sitting, um, we we're just having a, a a coffee, a bit of a lunch together, and he, he had said to me, you know, he was starting to do the S and C, and I was didn't know much about it, just the gym sessions you would have done yourself and that, and uh, he was saying, you know, yeah, I'm starting to do this with Kevin, and he's just went to a different level and now, but he was saying, you know, to start looking at down that avenue as well, and instead of being a specialist and something, become a generalist. Mm -hmm. because the more things you can do the better it is you know so like there even now with Ramard I would do all the gym work with the boy design all the all the gym sessions and uh yeah after that you would you would do all the football coaching on the pitch and all so it's 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 good to be able to turn your hand at a, at a number of things like mm -hmm. kind of transferable skills and kind of That's bring it 
bringing it onto the pitch and the gym and bits and pieces like that. And I suppose Longford kind of see, Longford football, obviously we, we see the powerhouse that probably is Mullinyakta down there. And we obviously know we were talking off here about Key Mackey. His involvement with Mullinyakta uh, had a very successful year with the last year. So it is obviously getting stronger. Uh, Longford senior footballers over, Billy O'Loughlin is over them this year, yeah. Mickey Han and Paul Brady. So it probably is making quiet strides. But again, Aidan, like a lot of things, it probably needs a lot of work at kind of club level too. Uh, it does. I am probably, probably like, you know, most rural enough places, number it's a numbers game. You know, it's uh, there's a lot of teams down with probably rural enough areas and probably population might be the best. So you kind of struggle for numbers in certain areas. But the thing is, you know, even the Longford senior team there, like they can always pull off big results. You know, they, they can always win the need to. And even, you know, Mullinyakta a few years ago when they went on under, under Mickey and, and done what they done done, like, no one's seen that coming. Mm. Um, so listen yeah it's when the winners come out of it you earn a Longford Senior Championship now in fairness it's not handed to you so um, yeah we work, we're kind of at the minute we've uh, four or five of the Longford under 20 um, panel would be Dromard lads and then you would have had Joe Hagen in the senior panel and Ross McInerney and that so yeah you've a nucleus of a, of a good of a good young young team with, with some of them senior boys mixed in and then you know you've still Francie McGee, you've Dan Bull, and you still have a, a good nucleus, Roni McIntyre. So you know, yeah, we'll we'll listen. We'll we'll set ourselves up, and we'll 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 look to be as competitive as possible in every game, and see where it takes us at the end of the year. How much of a genius is Masterson? We have to give him a shout out. <laughs> funny, funny. I was I was actually texting him about another thing there before he come on, before he come on to you this evening. Um, ah, uh, yeah, he's a great man, Don. Hey, he's a. Uh, Cool, calm, and collective individual now. Jesus, yeah, no, 100%, 100%. And uh, we will touch on to Swadden Bar, obviously, and you're involved with the Fermanagh Miners the same year, so busy yeah. that year, no doubt. And uh, we were talking about Grove McKernan's influence on Swadden Bar over the years, and obviously he's transferred to uh, Calvin Gales. Uh, Jason yeah. Ryan's over the Calvin Gales this year. But obviously, Calvin Club, club Football, obviously, Swad would have been intermediate that year. Yeah, no, I they would they'd come up to intermediate. I I done two years with them, and then I had went to Leitrim then, um, in 2014, and I coached Leitrim for the year, and we, we won the FBD that year. And then when Leitrim had kind of finished out, Swad had parted ways with their their manager, so I had went back just to kind of help out that year. And uh, they were in a an intermediate relegation playoff, and I uh, went back to kind of. Do a bit of coaching for them for that game, and thankfully they, they stayed up. And then the next year, I actually ended up staying on and taking over the next year. And we we actually lost the uh, Belt Herbert and Jo beat us in a replay in a promotion playoff game. Um. So yeah. So <laughs> Jo's uh, were our, our first relationship meeting have started as well as what we have now. Like. <laughs> He's still keeping Belt Herbert up. He kept him up last year against okay. Arva. He is. At the tender age of 65. He's still doing the magic. Hey, he's a don't goal- know how. I don't know how. He's, he's a goal getter, but I ah, listen, sure. When you when you meet him and you see the neck he's still in, it's no wonder that he can still do it. Like he's he's a great man. Sick, sick. And I suppose like did you enjoy uh, the kind of cabin the like the cabin kind of club ball and obviously you, a lot of good competitive matches and obviously we had different formats, we'd uh Breffney leagues yeah. and bits and pieces when you were probably playing. So the like the kind of quality of cabin club up at that year, because if it was twenty fourteen, we had a probably strong county team. So the kind of yeah. standard of cabin club football when you're involved in that year? I I listen, I've I've always thought, you know, the standard in, in cabin very competitive that then it was over Muller Horn for a year and Rammer won the senior championship that year. And I remember we, we played them in a group game in Breffney Park and I think that was twenty sixteen. Man, they just blew away their pace that they're just it was just you know whew, it was it smashed us to pieces and kinda had a we went out the next day. I think we played Dan in the last group game then and give them a bit of a a bit of a trim in that night, but you just had to try and put the team back together because Rammer had just their pace and Rammer went on to win it that year. And that's the thing about Rammer and Calvin, you know, they've, you know, they'll win a championship and then you don't know about them for a year or two. And then they come Could back. Could be different this year. Could be yeah. different this year. Jared, Jared O'Kane involved as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared's a good lad, good lad. He was at, I was in um, that Sports Institute of Northern Ireland with him when we were college together. So Jared's a great lad, hey. And not often I say that with dairy people. <laughs> Fair 
very good very good and uh, obviously uh, moving on to Mulhorn in 2016 and obviously yeah. they would have been in the senior championship at the time Aidan so yeah. a very very competitive championship they're a senior again this year and we know all about the ins and outs of Mulhorn football so what was that experience like for yourself? Uh, yeah it was really enjoyable hey good good people about the club you know just fanatical people hey it's a fanatical area like um uh, yeah it was it was it was a good experience um I, w- I was actually probably planning on staying on then after that but I was getting married the next year and we had a, we had a house on their way too you know so uh just didn't didn't lend itself that I would have the time to do that so I actually moved to Dramar and it was kind of a lesser role where Sean was managing and I was just doing a bit of coaching so it meant I could miss games if it, if it suited whereas if you're a manager it's 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 a lot harder to do that you know but no I I, I good time in Mullahorn and there were good people but I think maybe I might have burnt a few bridges then when I moved to Gauna. So. <laughs> oh Jesus big time big bloody time yeah so um but yeah I should ask football we have to touch on Gauna obviously the ins and outs of Gauna and obviously they'll be senior champions champions very very soon and we'll probably have to move to Afghanistan or something just to get away from the noise if they do get over the line in so <laughs> no way ah hey talk about Talk about good clubs and great people. Jeez, they were like, oh, driven. In fairness, you know, fu- funny now, like, uh, you know, you be in the house here, like, it's the first thing I do be always check the down score. First thing, you know, when you when you be coming back from football or whatever, or you be texting one of the boys maybe to see how they got on, or because I'd still be in, probably out of all the clubs I've been at, I would still be in contact with yeah. most of the boys from there you know and even some of the committee members and that you know where they're no great area hey geez the women the women that made the tea and the sandwiches after training and that they were just like we had uh when i was there we do we we do we boy oisin oisin pearson reckons i've named them after him but uh I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I, of course oisin say that yeah, yeah, yeah. and i says uh i says no oisin the reason i named them oisin was because I'm shouting for fuck's sake, Oisin, all the time down here. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to start shooting McConville, maybe, no? <laughs> so, uh, but even, you know, the women that would that would make the tea and sandwiches, you know, they'd be saying to you, you know, if you're ever struggling for a babysitter, bring bring Oisin down here and we look after them during training. Yeah. Oh, you know, they're just oh, great people, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, great to hear. And obviously, up until last year, Kilcar, like the experience of Donegal, we know about the powerhouse of Kilcar, the McHughes, with Brady, and a great experience, Donegal football, probably in a bit of transition to being an old Declan Bonner is trying to get the show on the road. I think it's his second last year with the Donegal footballers, or could, well, we could, could end this year, or if, if our market over the line. But what was that experience like in Donegal, Ed? I great, great experience too. Like, you know, geez, I've, I've probably been blessed wherever I've been, you know, that... Um, there have been such positive experiences for me. Um, some of the players from them clubs made me thinking it was as positive, but no. <laughs> uh, Who? Name names. <laughs> I, no, I, I again really enjoy Kilcar. The big thing was that like Glenties, Kilcar, Unions, you know, Gidor up till probably last season, like, you know, for three years there in Donegal, them four teams would have been in the top seven or eight teams in Ulster too, you know, it was just... Mm-hmm. It was so competitive, you know, when we, the, the 2020 championship final, we, we beat, we beat Yodor in the semi-final and we were down to play Glenties and that. And then, you know, with, with COVID, it was, it was put off and we actually didn't get playing it until the summer of 2021, you know, and we ended up losing it on penalties that night. But, uh, you know, as you talk about, we talked off air before we come on about inside forwards, you know, just Paddy give an exhibition in that final that night. Like, I think he kicked nine of our 13 points and was, was like, I think it was seven from play and was fouled probably for, for two or three of the other scores that was, that was from the other side. But <clears throat> no, I mean, I'm delighted for him too. He's, he seems Never won an all-star. Couldn't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Delighted. Like he seems to have had a, a rich vein of form now too. in, in them last few league games for Donegal, he's, He's a, he's a fellow I would still be in, in touch with regularly. I mean, him at lunch there not, not too long ago. So, uh, no, um, yeah, gr- great lads and a great club as well. A lovely area. Jeez, talk about a, a scenic area, hey, or, or a place for your holidays. You know, it was uh, it was a great area. And, you know, mm. somewhere like Kilcar, I think there's there's 900 in the parish. Mm. And they can consistently produce the quality of footballers that they do. Like. 
Yeah, I think I suppose the big thing, and that that's a lot of clubs are kind of after kind of going through. So, like, what's like? Can you see? <laughs> huh? Say again. Thanks for that. Or no, in the best possible manner, of course. Jeez, it's great to all the experience. More, more clubs in Paris Hilton. <laughs> or Tiger Woods. Yeah. Um, but like, I suppose my question is, like, it, like obviously the different experiences and the contrasts and obviously coaching, you're always trying to learn and as much as possible on the job. So what was the big kind of differences, say, between Longford, Donegal and, uh, say, like, um, in Cav? And like, what, like the, the, what was the standards like? Was the standards very high in each county? Uh, probably... Probably consistently across the board, um, Cavan football um, would would be like a lot of teams would be in a par, um, similar to Longford. But Cavan was pro- would probably be maybe senior championship across the board would have probably been the pace would have been maybe a wee bit bigger. Now probably out of all the teams like the level QR we're operating at, um, frightening you know. But the thing would be is in Donegal. The top few teams will be that far ahead of the rest. Like we we were winning senior championship games by 25, 30 points. You know what I mean? Like you were, you know, you were holding teams till two points, maybe two frees, teams not scoring from play against you. The gulf in class and, and how you know the, the top few teams operated compared to the rest was was massive. Whereas in Cavan or, or Longford, you wouldn't get a senior championship game a team running out when it'd be 25, 30 Not points. Chance, yeah. You know, we, we, I remember championship games, like we'd have scored maybe 6-22 in some of the teams. You know, that, that's not happening in Cavan or, or Longford. Like, mm. Mm. you know, so that's, it's strange. That, that was the big thing I always found different, how the, how the different counties run their senior championship. You know, whether group stages or round robin formats of a league and, and, and different things. But, you know, Tyrone there, where I would have traditionally grew up playing, like it's just straight knockout. It's all on the day. Like you get one bite at the cherry and that's it. No back door. And I think I think what also makes the even the league so competitive there is if you get relegated out of your league, you're relegated out of your championship as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I always found that strange where, especially in Donegal, you could be playing... A division three team, you know, when you're in the senior championship, and you a division one league team, so there's there's always going to be that golf in a way. So, you know, but listen, everyone structures it as to how they see fit, and you know, if it's been it's been a privilege probably to work in with all them areas and all them teams, and you see that different th- them different styles like. Mm, mm, no, definitely, hundred percent. Suppose, I suppose we can kind of crack into the co- coaching elements of. So, what are you kind of bringing to the table as like uh, when you're a coach, coaching all these teams? What are you kind of, what kind of stamp you kind of bring into each team? Because obviously we have all different styles. So, what what are you kind of bringing to the table like from from day one? What's your kind of standards you want to set? You should ask Dan Bull that when you had him on there. Dan Bull, yeah, Robin <laughs> <laughs> Caird and some of these boys tougher. Yeah, yeah. I know. Listen. You try as simple as possible, you know. Um, like, like, does coaches overcomplicate it? Like, do you like to kind of keep it simple, or do you feel nowadays it's got so technical? Like, what what do you like to bring to the table? I suppose. I, I like. I think you can. I think you can keep it as simple as possible. You know, you can still be technical, but you can be technical through simplicity. You know, I think to me, like everything's about the phases of the game. You know, you're either in possession of the ball. Or you're out of possession of the ball. Um, if you're in possession, you've either won it back after being out of it, or you've been in it possession for a long period of time. If you're out of possession, you've either just lost it, or you've been out of possession for a sustained period of time. So, to me, them four phases, like in, in soccer, it's called tactical periodization. To me, it's just phases of the game, and it's having your team as best prepared as possible for each of them phases. Um, I think if, if you can come home from a training session, home from a game, or at the end of the season, if you're doing a, a review in your team or yourself, listen, it mightn't always work out, but if you can look in the mirror and know that right or wrong, you you, you did your best, then there's, there's great comfort in that and there's a good honesty in that. No, hundred percent. I suppose obviously different styles, and we've kind of seen like the defensive kind of football brought in, yeah. like Tyrone. Tyrone, obviously a lot of people can say like that kind of well, puke football. Maybe as Pat Spillane said all them years ago, but look, it's success. It brought them success. So and maybe Johnny Gold brought it back in two thousand eleven. We all yeah. remember that two thousand eleven All Ireland semi against. Go ahead. Yeah. 
that's probably that's probably the big thing with coaching. You know, like if you if you look at soccer, uh, like Pep or Klopp, they'll have a philosophy and they'll go in, and they'll if the players aren't there to play that philosophy, they'll buy players, bring them in. To, you know, to that suits that philosophy. Whereas in Gaelic, you can't really do that. Mm-hmm. So you, you you could you could go to a club and you could be thinking, you know, well, I'm going to play two big men inside. And all of a sudden, you go to a club and you don't have two big men in, to play inside. So right away, you have to change your whole, you know, your whole philosophy. It has to be to suit the team. And I, th- I think that's the big thing about about Gaelic football. Like that's you know you you have to play what suits you. Mm, mm, no, 100%. No, that's what I'm kind of saying. Like we, it's so different many styles in the last while and a lot of people are maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, getting away from that kind of defensive football. I know Donegal, as I said, didn't bring it back in 2011 and maybe teams tried to yeah. bring it back. But at the end of the day, Jim McInnes was heavily, heavily scrutinised back in 2011. I know Rory Gallagher is kind of trying to get out of it yeah. as well. But like the yeah. defensive football over the years, Aidan, like let's not beat around the bush. It was hard to watch. Ah, it was very hard to watch. You know, very, very hard to watch. And when you're, when you're going to when you're going to Croke Park and you're watching games, like you want to see, you want to see players really expressing themselves and you know forwards up the pitch and taking men on and you know, like there's nothing like a forward taking a defender on edge of the seat stuff. You know, but you know, on, on even you know, funny I, I mentioned this last night to the lads at training. You can talk about Donegal and all their defensive setups and how good they were and how well drilled they were, but. They had three attackers that were on the top of their game in 2014. They had Morphe and McFadden inside. They had a young Paddy McBurdy. Like they, you know, no matter how good they were defensively, if they hadn't them three boys up the pitch at times, they weren't going to win no All Ireland. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and that and that's the thing. Teams, teams set up defensively and they'll bring 14 back, and you know they're they're well tuned and they're well drilled. And you can tell they've worked on it. But they've no outlet then getting up the pitch and they get so far and you know they've all of a sudden they're turned over again and eventually you know a defensive a defensive wall will break down if, if you throw enough muck at it like yeah, and like I suppose the, an example we can nearly use is Donegal Derry last year in the Ulster Championship, and obviously you know Paddy McBrady scores that absolutely yeah. outrageous point to kind of you know bring Donegal to the next level and get them over the line. So yeah. like a lot of teams are adapting it, and like I know like the the thing these days is like long range shooting will uh, beat a blanket defence. So like a lot of teams that do set up and kind of play it, it restricts a lot of the players. So like we can use an example of Roscommon last year, Stephen Poacher. Very, very defensive minded yeah. coach. Let's not kind of beat around the bush again. But and obviously, Russ Common, a big expanse of football flying this year. So it does restrict a lot of teams in. It does, I, but you know, I would say like Stevie would get Stevie would get, you know, probably feathered and tarred in places, you know. But he's he, yeah, he's maybe a defensive coach, but he's he's a good defensive coach. It just mightn't have been the right time for us common to transition to play that way. They've, they've probably looked better now as they've tried to play a bit more. Attacking, you know, um, like Paddy Talley when he was in a down, didn't didn't really work out for him at down. He's went down to Kerry, and by all accounts, you know the Kerry boys absolutely would live and die by his word. Now, you know, I, I was very fortunate enough at St Mary's. I Paddy for four years and um, know Paddy well, like um, um, an outstanding coach. Sometimes in places, you know, familiarity kind of gets in the way because I remember been the fourth year at St Mary's and you know when the Sigerson was over I was kind of thinking you know geez I don't know if I could have done a fifth you know listening to the same voice or listening to Paddy geez I was about I was out of St Mary's about three months and you talk about missing that hands-on every yeah. speciality coaching like you just sometimes you don't know what you've got till it's gone like mm. Mm. Yeah, no, suppose that's what I'm going to say. And obviously, we kind of have seen was common, like, the, you know, the, probably the best forwards to in Ireland at the minute with some of the best forwards, exciting forwards. So, like, it's great to kind of see them playing that kind of expansive football. And it does make you think last year, if they played the football they are playing this year, God is what could have happened last year. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. And um, hindsight's a great thing. But uh, I would say probably no more so than what we talked about there. was common at that period of time their management team probably thought that this was the best thing to do to suit them and you know they probably looked at themselves at the end of the year did we do everything right maybe not but did the things we didn't do right did we do them as best we can and they probably felt they did you know I'm sure Stephen had them poached well defensively but it just mightn't have suited them at that time and Mm. the change this year and that's that's the big transition for them you know there's 
there's also teams probably out there in Ireland that, you know, were a bit more attack minded and they're probably leading games going into the last few minutes and they've they've maybe shipped the goal later on and they're probably thinking, Jesus, why didn't I drop a sweeper back there? You know, or why didn't I put a big man on the edge of the square to protect us from a high ball? Mm. Hindsight's a great thing, like, but if you can justify to yourself why you've done something and and you know, look yourself in the mirror and say that you did the best you could, that's what you have to accept. Sometimes the the rest of it's out of your hands, like. I suppose when you're watching a game of football and obviously this weekend would be an absolutely ideal weekend to kind of look at the statistics, yeah. maybe not the Calvin Andrew game, but definitely the Donegal and Armagh game like statistics. So when you're watching on to a game, Maiden, and obviously looking at coaching points yeah. and techniques and bits and pieces, what kind of maybe, what's, what, what gets, I know every other every other average fan, but what gets your Aidan McCarran, the coach, get going? You know, what gets your blood going? Is it just the kind of statistics or say like this Sunday, what will you be watching out for that'll right think, oh my God, that works, that, that'll look fantastic? First thing I first thing I love when I'm at the games live is watching the warm ups. Oh, I like everyone, yeah. I love watching the warm ups and you know, just wee nuggets that maybe you can take for your own team and um stuff like that. When when the game starts, first thing I'll I'll always look for is who's picking who. Hmm. You know what I mean? The man marking jobs. Hmm. Then it'll go to kickouts, how the teams are pressing. That's a big thing these days, kickouts, isn't it? And you know, yeah. Long kickouts, the new short again, like short kickouts was all in there for, for a while. Hood lid and then spread out, yeah. Now it's back to, to kicking it a wee bit longer. Um, and then and then you kind of look, you know, like if Rain O'Neill, if he's in the edge of the square, how Armagh looked to get the ball into him, you know, they're, I know Armagh, like when he's in there, Armagh, like getting it in, but they're very measured in how they do it, you know, it's... it's it need to be. Yeah, they're, they're, and they are, you know, when he's in there, like it's a, Nice diagonal floated ball, you know, and sometimes you go to a club game and you see mm-hmm. him playing a big man in the edge of the square and they're trying to kick at them from everywhere. Mm-hmm. Where Armagh, you know, they're they're measured with them in there. And then obviously on the flip side, how Donegal try and get the ball to Paddy, who loves coming on the loop, you know. And mm-hmm. I, I love watching how teams try to, like everyone knows Paddy's coming on the loop, how teams try and set up to stop that. Um, you know, you talked about last year, like I thought... Derry done a great job on it um, to the last kick of the game and then got away in one. Yeah, and like it, it, it just because uh, just as you mentioned that we probably would barely score at the end. What do you feel happened in the, the Derry defence? Like I know Christ, it was what the 65th, 66th minute yeah. of the game. What do you feel happened or malfunctioned at that very little? Don't get me wrong, Derry did have an absolute nail, but what happened in that split second? No, I, I don't think I don't think it was I don't think it was. I think it was actually later. It might have been the seventy-first minute, or oh, something ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I tell you, in my opinion, what happened there was Owen McNeilis and me and Michael Murphy entered the field to play. Is McNeilis playing this year? He is. No, he's not. No. Oh, not okay. He's he's pulled the pin apparently. Again, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to me, what what happened there was Michael Murphy and Owen McNeilis entered the field to play. The whole first half and the early parts of the second half. Chrissy McCage's whole job was just to hold Paddy up and Derry were able to get three or four other defenders in because they'd obviously identified that Paddy was going to be the main scoring threat. Um, and I think if you if you look then, when Owen McNeilis and Murphy come on to the pitch, they're scoring threats as well. So it took away them extra defenders from around Paddy's area. It freed Paddy up. And, you know, when, when Paddy gets space and he comes like that, there's there's no better finisher in Ireland, like. Mm, mm, I think mm. I think to me yeah. that fundamentally happened like um, mm. the fact that Owen McNeilis and, and Murphy was on the ball men that also needed detailed and needed man to man and it just meant then Derry had to get bodies elsewhere and it was just they were stretched a wee bit and a bit of fatiguing as well obviously and Paddy got that half yard and kicked the kicked the wonder score like. It was just outrageous. So, yes, yeah, so I was referring back to that point. So, what you're obviously the, so the kick outs, like the who's picking up who, anything yeah. else? Just... Man, man, kickers. Then, obviously, if you're your transition of stage, you know, um, where teams like very rarely now do teams press for the full size of the pitch. You know, some teams will mark the opposition's 45 and they'll press from there. Some teams will have it back as far as the 65. Just all them we stays, like, just love that we thing. Even maybe, you know, Changes within the game, you know, maybe even half back switching or you know, number ten or twelve coming back, like you know, just 
things like that, you know, and who runs the ball, who looks to kick the ball first, you know, a lot of a lot of things like that. I I I just love I love all that, like love love football now, love going to it and seeing that stuff. What players are exciting you at the minute? I have a feeling Connor Myler gets your juices going. Does he, he does at the minute, hey, he does. Jeez, I just had a, had a conversation um, about him today in Oma. Hey, Jesus. He's uh, sick. He's top of his game at the minute, you know, and really, like, he, he can do it all. Like, I, I'd say if you put him in goals, he'd be a decent goalkeeper. Like, he's he really, you know, he, he can do the man to man jobs. He can, he can pop up with. In the half forward line, you can play him as a forward. You can play him inside. He's popping up now with scores like that goal he got at the weekend. Like he's he's starting out had like big scores till his game. And that that coming a big time for Tyrone. Um, but no, he's 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 just a, a complete modern day footballer, you know. Mm-hmm. I suppose obviously when you're kind of coaching a team and obviously the, the, the stats, the figures and bits and pieces you told yeah. them beforehand and when you kind of see all that, obviously when you're winning the game and when you win it, of course when you win it, when you end up getting a good result, when you see your kind of, the fruits of the labour kind of fitting off, does it make you, how proud does it make you because obviously you're thinking about it all week, when you're over a club team, you may as well be over 40 babies really in uh-huh. at the best of times but uh-huh. when, 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 thing, when things are going well, how, how proud does it make you feel? Ah, uh, sure, Jesus, it'd be outstanding. Like, there's, there's no better buzz. Um, you know, even there, if you work on something and you see it coming off, like it, it works. When it works, like you be, you be delighted. You know, funny we, we played a challenge game last week. You know, and for the past two weeks on the we haven't been on the grass that long, but we're only on it now. But maybe three weeks. Like, um, we've been working on just certain things, and we've tried to hammer that home at, at all the key points you know and just hammer it home as much as possible and we, we played a challenge game um last week and she's the lads carried it out you know n- you were nearly coming away thinking she's they've carried that out too well i hope we you know i hope we haven't we haven't uh peaked too early yeah 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 you know and you're just like you know and i was coming home and come back to the house here and i was just smiling ear to ear like it was only a challenge game you know and you were just in and the missus was like jeez it must have went well the night because you're you're still all smiles, and even there, you know, you're going to bed that night, and you've that buzz and that kind of excitement that things have went so well. Like, do you find it hard to switch off? Because, like, even when I come home from training, what do they do? Who do they kick it to? Do they do that well? Switch off? I don't think. Do, I can, can you switch off? I can't switch off. I, can't, I probably would even switch off after this. I don't think I've switched off in about fifteen years. Same as that. I think. I think. I think it helps here. My 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 wife, uh, she's she's not not into Gaelic football at all. You're lucky. You're probably lucky. Um, it, it's it's great that, and I I always said when we when we got married and that, and we moved into the new home here, that I would never bring football home with me. So, and I think I think there's only one or twice where I've been in real bad moods, and I've 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 driven around in a skillin for about forty five. <laughs> <laughs> laughing to get it, well, but yeah. no, it's great. And listen, I've I've you know a lot of friends too that mightn't just be the most GA oriented people, so that helps. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's good. But you know that saying about coaches anyway? There's two types of coaches. Those looking work and those about to be looking work. So yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you can never get too high when you win and never get too down when you lose because, you know, there's there's, there's always other days coming. We touched on players exciting at the minute and I suppose adapting your style of play. So like the style of play you like to kind of bring to the table, what kind of players play county, even club to a degree, what kind of players are we doing kind of thinking right you know, there's a lot of wouldn't mind having about the place. A couple of pairs to name for you. Ah, yeah, sure. Listen, you know, we, we spoke about him there. We, we go to Kiavan right away. She's big Garoud, like, you know, Garoud in full flight is... Just... You're attack-minded, you're attack are you? I, I like, I like, listen, I think if, if you're going to win anything, you need you need attackers, like, you know, um, I I think Garoud, like, I've seen, I've seen Garoud operating 10, 10 years now since he was that under-21, you know, with that Kiavan team and... Uh, he's he's an exceptional an exceptional player. Um, there's Joe Hagen down in down in Longford too, who had a who had a, had a good league campaign with them. Um, he's he's talented boy. We're we're fortunate to have him at at Dremard as well. And you know, obviously Paddy, we talked we talked about him. <clears throat> I would say <clears throat> to me, like Paddy is an inside player, is just just exceptional. You know. Um, he, he like he's you know we we'd have been playing and even when he's done a goal sure you look up times and there's no one near him for eighty meters like and there's three or four defenders around him and Paddy's still winning ball and still guaranteeing he scores and 
you know, I, I think in all all the all the time working with him, I think I've seen him miss maybe one free. You know what I mean? He he just doesn't he doesn't miss. He's just a lethal weapon. Like he's you know when you, you if you were if you had young lads and they were playing as forwards, you'd you'd be telling them you know when be as good a finisher as what Paddy is, and you'll go far in the game. There. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent. I suppose. Kind of what coaches have you looked up to in the past, and obviously present. Obviously, I suppose the ones that would probably stick out is Jim Gavin, Jim McInnes. But any anyone else different? I, you know, geez, it was. I suppose just thinking about this today, like a. Uh, one of the one of the the first coach I had at at minor level was Liam Donnelly. That's Maddie and Richie's father. Okay. And Liam was Liam's probably ahead of his time then too. You know, and had you very fit and very organised even at at minor level. Like, and it's funny because I remember we be we be training in Oma and Richie and Maddie would only be jeez, they might only been five and seven. Or does that make you feel old? Five and eight. It does, I, you know, but you know, you have a good laugh about it any time you meet them. Like, and uh, the two boys would always have a ball of them, their own, you know, when the train would be going on. But you could. And Matty's out for the rest of the year, isn't he? Uh, Matty, uh, Matty, yeah. But, yeah, by the account, by all accounts, by all accounts, which is a big blow to Throne as well, you know, because he, he is such a leader. Um, but, you know, you'd, you'd always been, when the minor session would have been finished, you could near guarantee that one of them was crying because their match, their. Their, their match at the side of the pitch would have descended into chaos and there might have been <laughs> thrown. But no, and then obviously, you know, Paddy Talley at, at college was, Jesus, he was he was exceptional. Like he was, again, probably way ahead of his time. And he was, I think he was 29, like in 2003, when he when he trained Tyrone for, for Mickey at that time, you know, and we had him at St Mary's at that time. So he was brilliant. But obviously then Mickey um, at Tyrone was, Jesus, just exceptional. Like, and, you know, and, at the time, you know, you you felt maybe you deserved a wee bit more game time than what you'd have got or whatever. But one thing you could not do is is not respect him, like and what he, you know, where he took Tyrone and and you know the foundations that he lay. And funny, I remember, you know, you talk about I hadn't hadn't seen him in a while, and it was he was on BBC for one of the games. I can't remember what game it was. He was in the studio, and it was might have been just after he he stepped or Tyrone weren't renewing his contract and I think it might have been might have been a Calvin game I can't remember who it was oh Calvin Down maybe no it might have been yeah that's what it was it was actually Calvin Down and I remember sitting in the chair here I was watching it like it was the Covid times so I don't think there was any crowd at it oh. and when he spoke at half time I was just like he just yeah. blew away again you know just mm. literally blew you away again mm. he was he was excited like he could just hold the room and and how he he motivates in the same voice and all he was just he was deadly and then you know um, I'd fortunate to work under Maliki for a bit Maliki mm. you know and again she's absolutely brilliant Dom Corrigan as well who's yeah oh yeah brilliant yeah plater of success and probably look, looking back on that now John you know probably at the time with a lot of them maybe more so it would have been with Dom but in the early days with Mickey Hart Paddy Talley and you know, probably with them, I wish now I had studied the game a wee bit more because mm-hmm. you had the you were working under the best in the business. Like for, she said, I would have been working under Mickey for maybe four or five years, four yeah. years Paddy as well. Like you know, and yeah. probably wish now you could do that time again and just take it all in and just see how they really operate. Because maybe when you're younger in your early twenties as a player, you're not thinking about the next step. Whereas by the time I worked under Maliki for a year, I was like. Kind of watching absolutely everything. Dom Corrigan too, who had who had I'd be chatting to every day. But you know, with him as well, you'd just be you'd just be like a sponge soaking all up and just taking all their good points. You know, a hundred percent. The current state of affairs as well, Aidan. Like, what's the verdict on it all? Like, and don't get like I, I do feel like the the Gaelic games. Like, I know Harlan's getting a lot of plaudits at the minute, and a lot yeah. of people saying it's probably miles ahead, unfortunately, for more, our football enthusiasts. But the current state of affairs, like, I feel the game is getting very commercial. You see all these podcasts and also yeah. like, it'd be, it'd be great if you know it could kind of we could get like that in return for the quality of maybe the games or marketing. And I know, look, the opening weekend, you had two Connacht games, and you know, for man in Tyrone. So yeah. the current state of affairs, are you impressed? Hey. Uh, <sighs> I, you'd be, I'd be impressed with how football's set up at the minute. You know, like you can watch almost any game now. You know, you can you can get access to it. 
probably with with RTE that would be the you know the flagship of of the GAA. You'd be probably expecting a wee bit more in 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 line of their analysis and things like that. You know when you compare that to Sky, you're just Sky blows you away. Even, even TG4, you know, um, brilliant, yeah. It's it's excellent, you know, and you just you'd wonder um, why RTE are are flagging behind. Like, you know, again. Uh, when when Sky's on and McGuinness is on Sky or Donaghy or Horn and Canavan, you know you watch a game and I, like you come away and you think you're you know more about the game than when you started to watch it. Like you know just yeah. with analysis and what they're seeing, you know. And, um, it's 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 a great time to be a Gaelic footballer at the minute. You know with all the stuff that goes along with like again back to Conor Myler there. Uh, I see he's an ambassador now. He must have about fifty companies. <laughs> <laughs> He's an ambassador for it at the minute. There's deserves probably, it though, deserves it. A hundred percent. There's there's probably not a better time for for uh, they, they do deserve it, by God, to put in such effort. Like yeah. I, like I think if you're a Gaelic player and you're you're playing high standards, if you're getting that car, if you're getting that, I don't know, protein, I'd take it. You deserve they, it. They don't get enough, John. I'm I'm telling you, because you know, uh as I said to you, when the athletic logos are gone, hey, you know, you, you, you'll you not have that. So, you know, they should make hay when the sun shines. Like, and funny, with this conversation with Fintan Kelly of, of Monaghan a few weeks ago, um, me and Fintan would, would know other well. And he went back and a bit later in life and done his teaching. And he was he was just, you know, he, he decided that, you know, because of the Gaelic football and the, the presence that he had, he could get into the teaching and it was going to make maybe his life a wee bit easier than what he what his previous job was and you know by all means like geez the, the players need to be looked after because without the players at the minute there's 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 no draw like there's no they're the magnets to the whole worldwide audience and that so long may it continue for them and it, it's it's a great time for them like you see so many of the mm. players out of their of the clothing companies or the it's brilliant the, to see though Connor Madden there and in, in, in Chiavin, like a, <laughs> and, and, you know, he scored the goal in Ulster final and the next thing he had a close brand. Oh no, Jesus, Connor yeah. Madden. Yeah, so, yeah. If if he could if he could brush up in a shooting for Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. doubt you told him that. No doubt you told him yeah. that. But uh, you know, yeah. I think that there's that there's great for the for them, like and you it's know brilliant, but, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It ha- it happens in other sports, so why should it not happen in, in Gaelic football? Like? And yeah, like I suppose touching on the, the player welfare in the last couple of weeks about the, the expenses of look, players and I don't know how that's still a dispute because I said this numerous times, like the Phil Crow Park, the get the gate receipts in, you know, they give enjoyment to everyone every single weekend in. So how that was even up for the bait, I do not know. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I think it's probably traditionalists in the GAA where, you know, players should be out of the house 10 nights a week and for nothing. You know what I mean? And sacrifice their family time and all that, and don't don't expect nothing. You're doing it for the good of the the good of the game or the good of the county. When you know maybe some of the ones in Crook Park are in big salaries, and it's all right for them to say that. But uh, you know, if you're a 22 year old and you're maybe struggling to put diesel into the car to get the training, like you know maybe a student and that, so no, definitely stuff like that has to be looked at and has to be sorted. Hundred percent, and uh, just a word on the kind of the quality of football we're kind of seeing this minute. I know obviously your native county Throne did win the All Ireland last year. Great to see a change. So yeah. the quality kind of football, like obviously moving into the championship now. Like, are you expecting a kind of good, hopefully good intensity brand of football? I definitely, you know, and one team I'm re- I'm really looking forward to seeing in the battle of, of championship is Galway. Who, you know, I I think Galway have have something about them. Like, and it has to deliver this year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and again, you know, the more so we're talking about you have the likes of Shane Walsh. Like Shane Walsh to me is one of them, one of them players that you would travel to go and see. You know, even how he moves off the ball, what he's like when he gets the ball. You know, he's like he he's a player that you you know you'd you'd really really enjoy watching, and that's that's the kind of the marquee boys in football at the minute. You know, we've you know back in my day, like when you were playing, if you if you kicked the odd point of your weaker foot, you would thought, you know, Jesus, this is deadly. I've worked on it well. Now you have boys like him kicking freeze of both feet, like, and it's it's a common thing now in Gaelic football. You go to club football, you'll have you'll have free takers kicking them with both feet. It just shows how much the game has moved on in a short space of time, like. But now I'm I'm really looking forward to an exciting championship, like. 
Thanks to Aidan McCarran for joining me this week. And of course, the podcast is brought to you by orgorich.com and attack the E. Use my program JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgorich.com and get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on attack the Be attack minded. And if you're liking what you're seeing, like and subscribe to YouTube because the sport's been absolutely brilliant so far. Thank you guys and stay tuned for more future episodes.